All right, this is much later in the future. Election night number two. Right, election night number one was probably uh, Park, President Park. Election night number two, completely different. So this is much later. This is from the sixth block. Oh, polls are now closed, I suppose, she said. Uh, this is from Old Mutes Eternal Logs in Heo Seo Young's office. Who even cares, I sighed. We both know there might as well be one, only one candidate in the running now. Five years of President and Chief Counselor Ryu? Like, maybe he'll invent some new titles for himself now that he has all the power on the ship, Grand Emperor Ryu. I lit a cigarette, wishing I could have gotten the emotional release out of it that the man I was imitating had gotten. Then I reflected on it and remembered that he didn't get anything out of it either. It was just an addiction. What's this going to mean? So, that, uh, obviously she's saying she does this. For us. Um, which is kind of interesting. She obviously doesn't get any kind of physical benefits from smoking a cigarette because she's an AI. Exciting. Then I reflected on it. Uh, it's just an addiction. What's this going to mean, she asked. I knew what that she already knew exactly what the implications were. It means he's pretty much defanged the security veto since he'll have the presidential override and all. I said, can't believe this has actually happened. My worry was always with five more years of President Park, like, I never thought it would be this. Has anything like this ever happened before? She asked. Yeah, 2551, I said, recollecting the comparison that's been on my mind the most as of late. There was a revolution. It only lasted like five years. By peasants who believed in total democracy. I managed to steal the root password and held the ship hostage until we surrendered. We had no choice. But it didn't last, right? You were able to put things right in the end, weren't you? Yeah, trailed off, yeah, but it was absolutely catastrophic. Star got re irreparably damaged in the process. He was the ship's navigation AI. And those revolutionary fuckers killed him. He got, we got the people under control in the end, but the damage was already done. Like, if something bad happens again, well, it can't be okay, right? Can't. Killed the navigation AI. And we're telling this to the person who we already know is going to kill Old Mute. So, exciting. What do we do now then? She asked. I could see fear and uncertainty in her eyes, and like, I really wanted to say something to reassure her. I wanted to have a good answer. I don't know, so young. He's, I said. I've got nothing. Break open the vintage 3899 you got from that kid last election, I guess. I think drinking vicariously through you is the best I can manage this evening. Oh, I forgot all about that. I've been saving it for, well... Hardly matters anymore. I suppose I might as well, she said, giving up to find the bottle. I already knew what she had been saving it for. Anyway, her 20th anniversary. It would have been this year. It's not as if I think we'll have anything worth celebrating in the future. Pop the cork, poured herself a glass. I imitated her gesture, rendering a glass of my own into my hand. This dynamic is really uncomfortable. Mute! <laughs> what should we toast, she asked. I don't know, I said, being too fucking old to handle this shit. She raised her glass to my screen. Here's to being too fucking old to handle this shit, she said. The words didn't ring right coming from her, aside from when she was angry. Cursing never suited her. Cheers. She took a long sip. She paused, reflecting on it. I thought it'd be better. She finally said she took another sip, then she laughed. It's awful. This is actually the worst wine I've tasted in my life. Good thing I didn't share it with my husband, she said, laughing com uncomfortably again. Going to pour her usual whiskey instead. This is the worst. It's like drinking vinegar. You know, counselor, this may well actually be vinegar. I guess I should have anticipated that from a 150-year-old bottle of wine. As if something that old could be anything but worthless. I rolled my eyes. If only I could be like 150 and young again, I said. I'm much I'm better at dealing with those feelings, but I'm not that much better. Maybe I'd be less scared if I had a 1600 years of experience, she said. I don't know, Seo Young. I'm tired. I'm just so fucking tired, Seo Young. I said to her, taking a drag, everything is changing. All these young men in politics are causing so much damage, and like, I'm so tired. She moved her chair up close to my screen. How can you be tired? You're a computer. It's not as though you have a body that can age, she asked sympathetically. Well, you know, I've made up all sorts of little processes that get increasingly bloated over time. Every time I get a new piece of input, I have to process it and cross-reference it against the data from all those years of experience in order to contextualize it. I'm designed for this. I was only supposed to be around for a thousand at most, okay? It just gets so tiring. Will that happen to me? Oh, mute. 
I am so sorry, she said to me, looking like she had taken it harshly. I feel as though I missed the last election. I feel as though I missed the last election night. We spent all night scrambling to put down protests. Things felt so simple and under control then. Look, Seo Young, we'll get through this. One fraudulent election isn't enough to render us powerless. I promise, okay? I promise you. I'm just scared, ma'am. She said, putting her hand against the screen. I'm not allowed to be scared. I'm expected to be strong, commanding. I should be able to stare down any man. I should be able to keep on top of everything that happens on the ship. I should be able to protect my family. I should be able to raise my daughter. There's too much on me. And I failed too many times. I'm scared. I'm not allowed to be scared, but I'm scared. You shouldn't be able to. What the hell is wrong with this society? Who's your daughter? Oh, oh she's adorable. We haven't read about this. I know, it's okay, look at me, I said, drawing my own hand, touching hers, and trying to be, trying my best to come up with bravado. It was the best I could do to comfort her. I'm fucking mute, AI in charge of Mogongwa's security operations. I have been keeping the Mogongwa safe since 2390, and I will do whatever it takes to keep it that way if it kills me. Look at me, look at me in the eyes. It's my responsibility to keep things under control, Lieutenant. All you have to do is follow orders and believe me when I say things are going to be okay. They're going to be tough, but they're going to be okay. It's not your job to worry about that. Let me be strong. Let me be in control. I believe in you. Do you trust me, Lieutenant? Can you follow that order? I... She stared at me, finishing her shot of whiskey in one. I had given this speech to her before when she was still afraid to be so familiar to me and had much younger eyes. And I'd given that speech to at least a dozen men and women in the past. I'm no longer able to tell if it's bullshit or not. Yes, ma'am, she said quietly. Thank you. Oh, you, you liar! Good, I said. Then believe me, we'll get through this, okay? Just watch me. At this point, I checked the network for notifications as I suspect, su just suspected the election results had come in all that they mattered. Now, come on, get up, I said to her in my best approximation of a matronly voice. The election results are in. Five years of Chief Counselor and President Ryu. Do we have a dossier yet on the biggest threat to ship security? You mean Ryu? No, we don't, she said, her voice becoming less shaky. Well, let's get together, Lieutenant. I ordered her. Yes, ma'am, she said, confident again. You guys are... You're so lovely. So, that's another block. That is one more block on the fire. That was a lot of block M5, and a lot of uh, the end was block M6. So, there's definitely a, a chronology to this that's happening. So unless you have any objections, I'm going to just disable you and we're going to roll through another six. Any... No errors found! Ha! Not sure if that's any even important. Probably it is. This is the only time I'm allowed to do emergency diagnostics, so... Let's grab some new messages! All right, we've got we've got a lot of this first chunk down. Let's see, this is M6, M5, M6. We're much later at the bottom. I wanted to go bottom from the bottom up and like meet in the middle, but nah. Let's go back. Go back to M2. Let's get let's get these cuties on a roll again. Let's clean up M2. And. Uh, M2. So I think that's all of M2. Updated wrinkled face textures. Hair charms. UKSPS uniform. Seo Young's smile. Park Jin Soong's memorial speech draft. I like all the bad data and text data. Keepsake from Earth. Okay, M2 going down. And this will leave us at a very, very little bit of power left. So, 7% power left. Enough to read them, pretty much. And then it'll be bedtime again. Bedtime for young silly sausages. Rendezvous in the dark of the review. This is from the Mu Ray Monthly, once again. I like reading those. Those are funny. And we got two mornings afters. Cool. And most extravagant bribery. Counselor Tay. Cool. We'll have fun with this. Sounds pretty normal. 
It's not that Rendezvous in the Dark has no redeeming qualities, or that it fails at what it sets out to do. It's about Miss Hong, Hei Wei Zhang, a troublemaking schoolgirl with a heart of ice, and her overwhelmingly generic upperclassman, Kiel, who for reasons of plot contrivances end up chasing around and antagonizing each other for two long acts, until the end where Hong is naturally tamed and the two marry. As far as this kind of mediocre play goes, it's the best I've seen, but the pinnacle of mediocrity is still mediocrity. The problem is it doesn't tell a compelling story or have any cohesive themes. Because it's not supposed to, it's designed to be broken up into short humorous scenes, each with a punchy conclusion so that they'll work out of context when performed in front of a private home audience as a form of disposable entertainment. To our editorial this month for a less cranky take on this changing demographics, the theater, and his disposable entertainment. This is a play that's supposed to be funny if, even if your mother-in-law is talking through half of it. And to its credit, it succeeds in that merit, but so what? This man complaining, it's too romantic. Yes, he is. Is that really the highest goal theater has now? Is this truly the best use of the amazingly talented Eternity Troop's time? Anyone who truly cares about art and theater will continue to be dismayed. With all that said, if there is one woman in the world who can sell the plausibly bitchy jerk turning into a love-struck wife and imbue the role with perfect comedic timing, it's A. Zhang and Lee Tae Mi manages to own his character through sheer force of his own personality. Whenever he's on stage, although unfortunately lately, his roles at the Silver Eternity's actual theater have been performed by understudies. If you like this sort of thing, Rendezvous in the Dark is absolutely worth seeing. If only, if you only go to the theater to leer at beautiful actresses. Well, you can't go wrong with the ever-lovely A. Zhang. More discerning audiences should stay away from the pale shadow of what the Silver Eternity used to be. Two stars! Currently being performed. Silly sausages. So, what's up with these mornings after? This is, uh, the flower girl, right? Yeah. An unmarried peasant girl. Dear Diary. Oh, I'm so in love! I just got home and after I finish eating, I need to get off to work, but right now I gotta write all this down because, ah, girl feelings! So much wrong with that. Yesterday on our date together, A actually held my hand in public! I thought she was worried about being seen with me like that before, but I guess she changed her mind, and that was even before dinner. I mean, afterwards I wouldn't have been surprised, because she insisted on us going through a lot of wine together. And she gets really possessive of me when she does that. Please, my dear, I insist, she told me as she ordered the second bottle. Money might be tight these days, but it's worth it to see you get all giggly and affectionate. What? I don't even know what you're talking about, I said, but then I couldn't help but giggle. Oh, fine. I mean it, especially with how little I seem to see you lately, she said sadly. What even is this? The abs in the absence of men, do all women just naturally play married? I don't know. Pretty good question. Well, we'll be able to spend mo more nights together once we're able to get a place of our own, right? I asked. I really can't wait until we can. If I could take her back to my home, it would be fine, but... <laughs> oh, no, no. No way am I sleeping with her with my parents on the other side of the screen. Getting a place of our own on the same deck is still the only option. I can't wait. Right, she said, and then took another drink. Afterwards, we went back to our, her cozy apartment behind the theater, and we drank some more. Pretty quickly got to the point in the evening where she could just not get her hands off me. Which, oh my gosh, I still can't deal with it at all. At all! Yeah. You know, it's time if you keep being like this with me in public, all those fangirls who call you Big Sister are gonna get jealous. This is... but... Hi, are they now? She said in her step. My, are they now? She said in that super husky voice of hers, it just totally makes me melt. Then she started to stroke my hair. I wish, sadly, there's not many of them anymore. Single girls just don't go to the theaters these days, it seems. Good, I said, I want you all to myself. I do miss all the love letters, though. My, they would say the most flattering things. She teased me. Then she walked over to the futon, slipped out of her dress like it was the most natural thing ever. And oh my gosh, just every time I see her, this isn't love. This is just completely unrestrained, perverse lust. <laughs> oh my gosh, just every time I see her naked, I'm just so blown away. That gorgeous black hair resting on her soft, totally smooth, perfect curves, and those long legs and long fingers and perfect. Just, ah, oh, jeez, I have to stop. I can't do her justice with all my babbling. But, ah, she could do anything to me after seeing that. And she loves it. It just keeps going. Yes, it does, Mute. Well, well, you could, you could call that, too. 
And, um, I know way more about what makes you beautiful than all those girls did anyway. Do you? She said, staring at me, giving me that look. Good thing I was way drunk, past the point of anything but blushing all the time. Because that really, really would have done it otherwise. And then she'd just tease me for that, too. Come here, she told me, gesturing. I had no choice but to do what she said. She undressed me quickly. It's... I think Mute's gonna be sick. <laughs> she undressed me quickly. It's her way of showing that she's in control. And I still get pretty nervous. I mean, really, I'm just terrified. What if she realizes just how much out of the depth I am compared to her? It's not as bad as it used to be, especially that first time she saw my booze. But oh my gosh, I just feel so aware of how gross and sweaty my body is and how it's got little hairs where she's perfectly smooth and how my boobs are tiny compared to hers and just... She sees in me, I love her, and I know she loves me back, but I just hit it sometimes. But then she pulled me on her lap, and we kissed, and then we both giggled at how we tasted like the peach drinks we just finished off. Every time we do this, I just suddenly really, really want to play with her boobs. Because, oh my gosh, they're the softest. Then she gives me a look, and I stop. But, well, after a while, this time, I just couldn't get over how perfect her body is. This isn't just love-struck rambling, it really, really is perfect. I ended up kissing her neck, and even that was just so soft. I don't really know what came over me, but I kind of really felt like biting her. I don't know, I feel bad now, but I just felt like I really wanted to leave a blemish on that super perfect body of hers. And I guess, um, to show that she was taken. I don't know, it's stupid, it sounds awful when I say it now. But I started out gentle, and she let me, so I kept going. And didn't even stop when she cried out. I didn't even think to stop. All I could think of when I heard that moan of hers was... Gosh, I wanted to hear more when I pulled my head back to look at her. <laughs> Mute. When I pulled my head back to look at her, it was just, gosh, it really did stick out so much. Complexion perfect and skin totally smooth in every other way, except for that really big red blemish. And knowing that it was mine, I felt like I really wanted to do it again. She grabbed me strongly and kept kissing me. Then she pinned me down and went at it more. I wanted to apologize, but she wouldn't let me say anything. I'm pretty bad at using words around her. I'm really glad we have a relationship like this, because if I couldn't kiss her, I don't know if I could ever tell her how I really felt. Then she went down on me. Oh! <laughs> We're getting to this! Mute! Come on! Get, get out of Keep up with me! Come on! Then she went down on me, and I just completely, totally melted under her. I really wish I'd done the same for her. Even though she's pretty much natural at making me cry out, and I never know what I'm doing, we pretty much both passed out right there before I could. When we woke up, we were both just all tangled up together naked on top of her sheets, and she'd slept with her head on my waist. I really, really didn't want to leave. hate the mornings after. Why do our amazing evenings have to end? Gosh, I'm just so in love with her. I wish it was possible to spend an entire day with her and not have to worry about having to work and scramble home in the mornings. <laughs> Why don't we already live together? It's not fair! Oh, May. Oh, May June. You're the best. So, I don't know if this is the sequel or a retelling of the same night, but I'm kind of hoping for both. <laughs>